think you're gonna be blown away by what this thing can do. But will it start a 15,000 BTU RV air conditioner on a 100 degree Texas day? Let's find out. This is the Yoshino B4000 SST portable power station. And it's the first power station to feature solid state lithium battery technology. Unlike traditional LFP and NMC batteries that use a liquid electrolyte, solid state batteries employ a solid electrolyte. This next generation solid state battery technology gives it higher energy density and a better safety profile, which results in a compact, lightweight power station with huge power output. The B4000 has a 2600 watt hour solid state lithium battery, and Yoshino claims that it can pump out a continuous 4000 watts at 120 volts, which would be really impressive for a power station of this size. I did a 3900 watt continuous rundown test on the B4000 that I'll share later in the video. I was surprised by the results. It also provides a surge of up to 6000 watts. That's significantly more than the Anchor Solix F2000 that I have sitting over here. When Yoshino asked me to review their battery, I took a look at the specs and their website, and I immediately jumped at the opportunity to test it out. And considering this is the first solid state power station to hit the market that's powered by solid state batteries, I couldn't wait to get a chance to play with it. So they sent me the B4000 and three 200 watt solar panels that I'll show you later in the video. So stay tuned as I unpack the features and do some hands-on testing with the B4000. I think you're gonna be blown away by what this thing can do. When you open the box, there's an accessory package that contains an AC recharge cable, the cigarette car charging cable, the solar charging cable, which is an MC4 to XC60 adapter cable, and a DC5521 adapter cable, so you can use it like a standard car outlet. The B4000 comes well packaged, and there was no damage during shipping. The exterior has a modern, sleek design, and it feels very rugged when you pick it up. It looks nice, and the buttons have a nice tactile feel when you push them. I think the wraparound metal bar might do a good job of protecting the front and back from accidental damage. On the bottom, you have your product label and some really grippy rubber feet that help prevent it from sliding around, especially on smooth surfaces. And the product label itself has some interesting information. So as you can see, it's 48.36 volts and it's 54 amp hours. It clearly states that the charging mode is up to 1800 watts and that the bypass mode is 12 amps max. And I believe that has something to do with the UPS mode, which I did hear from Yoshino that they're gonna be adding an option to enable or disable the UPS feature. It also shows that one of the USB-C ports is 100 watts, the other USB-C port is 20 watts. I'd really like to see both of those 100 watts. And also the wireless charging offers up to 15 watts each. Now, let's go through the key features and technical specifications for the B4000. At the heart of the power station, there's a little over 2,600 watt hours of solid state NMC lithium batteries. It only weighs 55 pounds, but can still put out 4,000 watts of continuous AC power. And when needed, it can surge up to 6,000 watts. It has dual AC outlets and a TT30 socket, which is your typical 30 amp RV outlet. It supports up to 600 watts of solar input through an MPPT solar charge controller that can handle up to 60 volts at 10 amps. And this is through an XT60 connector. There's a port to connect their upcoming expansion battery, offering unlimited expandability. On the front, you have the power button, the display, the light, two USB-As, and two USB-Cs. There's one 100-watt USB-C and one 20-watt USB-C. You also have your DC output. And I love the fact that it has dual wireless phone chargers on the top. Of course, it comes with Wi-Fi monitoring and a really nice app. The padded, comfortable handles make it easy to move around, and it has at least a 2500 cycle battery life. This is currently Yoshino's largest solar generator and it's priced at $3,300. But they're running a $500 promotion this week and I have a $100 off coupon code that you can use at checkout, which brings the price down to 2,700. I also wanna mention that Yoshino is a US-based company and I called their tech support and to my surprise, they picked right up and I actually spoke to someone. So my experience calling the company was excellent. So whether you're a weekend warrior or a full-time RVer like me, the Yoshino B4000 could be a game changer. So the first thing I did with the power station was to fully charge it and then fully discharge it. Then I fully charged it back up and started my testing. The test I was the most curious about was to see if it could actually output 4,000 watts continuously. So I ran an approximately 3,900 watt discharge test to see what it would do. For this test, I ran an air conditioner, a 1,500 watt heater, and a heat gun. Using the heat gun, I was able to dial it in to just about 3,900 watts, give or take about 50 watts. During that test, I monitored the voltage and it seemed to stay right around 117 volts. I took a peek at the sine wave coming out of the inverter to make sure that it was staying clean. The sine wave from the inverter stayed pure during all of the tests that I did. 
the exhaust air temperatures increased as the test ran longer. And the B4000 finally shut down at 17% when the internal temperature reached 66 degrees Celsius, which is right around 150 degrees. Initially, I thought maybe I went over the 4000 watt limit. However, when I tried to turn the inverter back on, it would not turn on. I had to wait for the internal temperatures to cool down a little bit before it would click back on. It also appears that 49 degrees Celsius is the maximum temperature for charging. If the internal temperature was over 49C, the unit wouldn't charge. I also noticed that during charge tests, as the power station approached 49 degrees Celsius, it would derate the charging wattage. Instead of running at say 16 or 1700 watts, it would reduce it down to right around 1100. And I assume that that's part of the thermal management. I called Yoshino to ask about this, and they explained that the unit that I have is an early release test model. It's not the full production unit. And that they've made a lot of changes to the production units, and some of those changes include the cooling system. I definitely think that the performance of this has been outstanding. I don't think that a continuous 4000 watt discharge is a realistic expectation for a power station like this. And I also want to point out that the ambient temperature in my trailer that I was testing in was right around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was pretty hot in there to begin with. But that led me to do a more realistic test. A 30 amp RV connection is rated right around 3600 watts. So I figured let's see what a 3400 watt continuous discharge test would do. I feel like that's a little bit more realistic. So this time I fully recharged the power station and then I let it cool down so that the internal temperature wasn't already high. And then I started the continuous 3400 watt test. This time it made it all the way down to 8% before it hit the 66 degree over temperature disconnect. And again, the ambient temperature was about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So I would say that this is a pass, but I think it would be good if Yoshino could improve the cooling if they're claiming a 4000 watt continuous discharge. Today is the day I chose to do some solar testing with the Yoshino. The day started off with a lot of clouds, but it's three o'clock now and I'm starting to get some clear skies. As you can see, I'm getting patches of clear sky and still some clouds. I've had it out here for a couple hours in the direct sun, but the B4000 seems to be staying cool enough. No problem, the fan is running just a tiny bit, but it is charging, so it's working quite well. In direct sun, I'm getting uh, about 490 watts. Um, sometimes it peaks at 500, which tells me that it would take uh, four to five hours to finish charging. Now, a few things about these panels. They're quite nice. They seem to be very durable. They fold well. And these kickstands, they Velcro closed. You can just lay them flat if you have direct overhead sun, or if you have a sun at an angle like I do today, you can just tilt it using the legs. Just slip them out. They have limiting straps so they don't fold out too far. And then you just kind of align it like so. Looks good to me. One thing I noticed that I'm not a big fan of, the included cables that are attached directly. They have these MC4 connectors on it, which I do like, but they're a little bit short. I wish they were a couple feet longer. Of course, no big deal. You can always get extensions. And in order for me to connect everything together, I kind of had to have these panels pretty close, which means that as the sun gets lower, I'm possibly gonna have some shading from the other panels. I can always go forward a little bit further, but it's pretty tight. So if you do get this, just remember you might need to get some solar cable extensions. This cable comes out, it's all bonded together. I just took this cable and I split it down the middle. You can just literally pull them apart. These are all connected in series. So this panel feeds into this panel, feeds into this panel. And then the negative from this panel connects to the Yoshino and the positive from this panel connects to the Yoshino. Solar input is handled by an XT60 connector, and I do like that they included these Velcro wraps to keep everything organized. So you can just plug it in. That cable comes out here, and it splits positive and negative, and you just connect up the, the different male and female connectors. MC4 connectors make life much easier. The Yoshino B4000 handles up to 600 watts of solar. Each of these panels is 200 watts, so I'm pretty close to the maximum. If I could just get some sun, while testing it out in the field, I realized that I can't connect to it using the app. So I decided to call Yoshino Tech Support, which honestly was really good. They pick right up and I was able to get directly in touch with someone who could help me. They explained that while the Yoshino does connect to Wi-Fi, it doesn't actually have the ability to connect to the app via Bluetooth yet. That's coming in a future release. 
The power station that Yoshino sent me is an early test unit, so it's not the complete production unit that they have. So while I was talking to them about it, they explained that there are some differences between the unit I have and the production units. Now they are planning on coming out with the Bluetooth connectivity because it does have Bluetooth in it, but right now it's only used to connect to Wi-Fi. So it works great on the Wi-Fi network. You can monitor it from anywhere, which is a really nice feature. It's actually connected to the internet. But I was a little disappointed when I came out here in the field and I couldn't connect to it with the app. So that is coming, but because this is a pre-release model, I don't have that option. I do like this included zipper pouch. It means you can just pack your cables in and zip it up nice and clean and neat. You can see the size of the panel in relationship to the power station. They do fold up compactly. Next, I went over to the barn to see if I could run a couple of common appliances. This is just a standard air compressor, and let's fire it up comes up and runs no problem, pulling about 500 watts, we're going to shut it off again and restart it. Yep, no problem. The air compressor peaks out at about 760 watts. Now I'm going to test out a bench grinder. This has a high startup load, so we'll fire it up. It seems to start up with no problem. And then let's watch it start up and let's see what it pulls for wattage. Okay, the startup is about 1800. And then it spins up and drops back down to around 200. I'd say the B4000 can handle those items with no problem. But will it start a 15,000 BTU RV air conditioner on a 100 degree Texas day? Let's find out. I have the Yoshino next to my pedestal. I'm gonna be using a 30 amp to 50 amp adapter, and that's gonna power up my entire RV. Of course, I can't run more than one AC, so right now I have all of the air conditioners off, and I'm gonna turn on just the center one and monitor the power station using the app. This is where having that TT30 outlet at an angle is very helpful. Plug my adapter in here. Gives me my 50 amp connection over here. I'm gonna kill my 50 amp breaker. Plugged it in. So I'll go back inside and we'll fire it up. Currently 100 degrees out exactly. Look at that, that's funny. Here's my AC. I gotta clean those vents. All right, let's fire up the Yoshino app. It is online, fully charged. Well, 98%, we got 28 degrees. Let's go over to output. And we're gonna turn AC on. Camper just came on. So the base load of my RV is 825 watts, 813 watts. All right, I turned a couple things off. My base load is now 700 watts. So that's things like my converter, my fridge, stuff like that. I didn't expect it to be that much of a base load. So I'm curious to see if it'll actually work. Of course, I don't want to damage my air conditioner. So we're going to go to cool high. We'll do a cool low. Wow, look at that. It started right up. No problem at all. It's running at, let's see, 2100 watts. That's impressive. Let me try turning on a second air conditioner. This is probably a little crazy. We'll do low cool again. Nope. All right, that was too much. That was an overload. I just turned off the AC. I'm gonna let everything sit for a minute. Right back up to the 719-ish watts. And let me try this again. Do cool low. Came right on, no problem. That started up a 15,000 BTU Coleman air conditioner with no soft start, with a 700 watt base load. That's a 2,000 watt load for an hour and 10 minutes. I'm impressed. For my pros and cons, I would say on the pros side, it's small, lightweight, and it looks great. And of course, it's the only power station on the market to offer solid state battery technology. The buttons are pretty easy to use, and I really like the fact that the 30 amp outlet is sideways, which makes it much easier to use with a cord. It actually outputs 4,000 watts continuously, and I think that's really impressive. I know there's other bigger units out there that put out more power, but at this size, I don't think there's anything else on the market that can compare with that power output. So if space and weight are a major consideration for you, like in van life or RVing, this power station might be just what you need. For the cons, I would say that the firmware that came with the unit initially had some problems with it but right after I did the update all the problems seemed to go away and over the next few months Yoshino is going to be rolling out some updates that allow you to turn off the UPS feature and a few other things that I can't really remember right now
I also noticed that the app doesn't scan for Wi-Fi. You just have to type in the Wi-Fi manually. The max that you can leave the display on right now is 10 minutes. Now that's just the software settings. Maybe in the future, Yoshino will add a larger number, like a 60 minute timeout, or maybe a never shut off option. And I do find that this rear cover is a little bit difficult to close at times. It's a little finicky. I got it fine that time, but sometimes it, it sticks a little bit. Overall, I think the Yoshino did a great job. I think for who this would serve best are people who have large power demands, but only minimal space. My Anchor Solex F2000s can really only reliably put out 1800 watts continuously. They do work up to 2200 watts with some loads, but I've noticed that it doesn't work well over 1800 watts. But this handled a 3900 watt load for almost the entire battery's worth. So I think that's really impressive for the size of the unit. Solid state batteries do offer a very good safety profile. They're much more compact than LFP or other lithium ion battery technologies. I do like the light, it's quite bright. I think it would be good if they put multiple brightness settings on it, like most of the other power stations. I think that Yoshino could work on improving the cooling in the unit, and I'd probably like to see some additional AC outlets. It's really nice that you have the TT30 outlet, but only having two standard AC outlets might be a problem for some people. If that's an issue for you, I'd suggest one of these. This will adapt a TT30 outlet to three standard 15 or 20 amp outlets. I use this all the time because I'm always dealing with 30 amp connections. This is just a Camco product and I'll leave a link to it down below. And the solar panels were great. I'm actually looking forward to using them in the future. They have these little grommets on the side, which means I can lash them down or stake them down to the ground or possibly even put them on the roof of my trailer. Of course, this is a new product on the market with new technology, so you're going to be paying a premium for it. However, right now, the day that this video is released, this is on sale with $500 off. The discount code that you can use at checkout is SST100. That'll give you another $100 off. So that's a total of a $600 discount, which I think brings us back down into the territory of competitive pricing. So if you want the latest technology and want a chance to play with solid state batteries, this is the opportunity. It's a $600 discount and I'll leave all the links down below. And because Yoshino is a new company, I'm really excited to see what they come up with next. This is one of their first product releases. It's performed better than I expected, especially with that air conditioner. I really didn't expect it to start a 15,000 BTU AC. So I would say that 6,000 watt surge works quite well. So if you're watching this video on the day of release, which should be September 24th, make sure you check out the sale because I think it only goes until Tuesday. I pushed to get this video done so I could release it during the sale. So if there's any interested people out there, they can take advantage of the discount. If you like this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Also, if you have any questions or thoughts, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. So I think that's all I have for you in this video. Please let me know if I missed something down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.